Kids are not very good at waiting. Well, neither are adults for the most part, but let's just stick with kids right now. An infant waiting for a bottle is not going to happen. Kids waiting for the pediatrician in the doctor's office, waiting to take their turn to play with their favorite toy at school, waiting for the, with you in the line at the DMV, waiting and calling out from the back seat, are we there yet? These experiences are painful for children. And during the season of Christmas, we ask them to wait even more, waiting in long lines to check out while you're buying gifts, waiting for the cookie to cool enough to start putting icing on it, waiting to take photos with Santa, muddling through the last days of school, just waiting for Christmas break to come about, waiting at delays at the airport or delays in traffic to get to Grandma's house, and then, in addition, the most hardest wait of all, waiting for the big day to arrive. So, how do you help your children be patient? How do you teach them patience? Well, experts have suggestions. Well, they always do. That's why we call them experts. They suggest that you um, maybe uh, talk to them about patience and or impatience if they understand the concept. They suggest to you that you model patience for them, but I always wonder how do impatient adults model patience for children. They suggest that you give your kids opportunities that will require more time, thus require more patience. Like playing a board game so that they have to wait to take their turn. Teaching children patience is a slow process because we are born impatient people. Each of us needs to learn how to wait. Now the reason we're talking about patience is because James does in chapter 5 of our text for this, for this evening. James in chapter 5 talks about the early church and how they are impatient for Jesus to come as promised. You see, throughout Jesus' ministry, he had been telling his disciples that he was going to come back, return to bring them home, take them back to the glorious kingdom that he will have for them in heaven. Jesus' first followers thought that he was going to come at any moment. But as each day passed, as each week passed, as each month, as each year passed, they wondered about the delay. The people were growing impatient. So James writes this letter to the impatient church. Repeatedly, he advises them to wait patiently, reminding the people that what they're waiting for isn't some minor event. It's the coming of Jesus, his glorious return. This is their hope. This is the culmination of their faith. Jesus' return is worth the wait. And then he uses an illustration that all the people of Kansas should readily understand. As a farmer waits through the fall and winter for the spring wheat crops, James reminds the church that they may have to wait a while. James encourages the church to hold on to hope as they wait patiently for the Lord. He knows how difficult it can be, how tempting it is to take things into your own hands and to rush the results as we would want them. James advises the church to not give up or give in but to wait patiently for God's timing. Now, you and I might not be as urgent to have that sense of urgency about Jesus coming again as the early church did. In fact, 
We maybe have a more keen sense of urgency for the coming of Christmas than we do for Christ's return. We do know, however, that there have been times in our lives when we've prayed for Jesus to act and he seems to delay in his response to us. Lying in the bed in the hospital, wrestling with a problem in the middle of the night, the uncertainty about a job layoff, waiting for that cold phone call for a new job offer. We've got to sell that house and we're getting no offers at all. We've prayed that Jesus would um, bring health to our family, strength to our friends, peace to our lives. From the depths of our hearts, we impatiently cry out, please, Jesus, don't be late. And through it all, James reminds us to be patient. But the Bible's idea of patience is a bit different than the way you and I think about patience today. WikiHow, which is a website that claims to be able to teach you or help you learn how to do anything that you want, you know, any, from tips and advice of, on anything from like how to alleviate back pain to how to breed canaries to how to um, write a screenplay. Well, there's a section in WikiHow that's called Christmas for Kids. It contains articles about how to help your kids write a letter to Santa, how to, how to snoop for gifts in the house without your parents finding out about it, how to um, draw baby Jesus in a manger. Well, one story gives an advice on how to wait for Christmas morning or Christmas evening if you open your presents then. Of the many suggestions that it gives, most of them center around distracting the person. They recommend that you um, tire yourself out before going to bed as if that's hard to do in the rush of Christmas. They suggest like listening to music, reading a book, making a list, uh, writing in the journal. The idea is to occupy the mind with something other than Christmas. Some of the ideas for kids is to help mom and dad with Christmas preparations like wrapping gifts, decorating, baking, or making a snack for Santa. These activities not only pass the time, but they actively involve the child in preparation. You see, that's the type of patience that James is talking about in our text. He doesn't tell us to wait passively. He says we are to wait actively, not sitting around twiddling our thumbs, but living today as if Christ has already come back, living the kingdom life now in our lives. And the examples he gives are quite simple. Don't grumble about one another. Don't complain about your brothers and sisters. Be patient by actively loving and caring for one another. Advent is often seen as the countdown to Christmas. And Sometimes we count down by counting up, you know, lighting an extra candle each week as we approach closer and closer to the coming of the light of the world as it draws near. But Advent is a time for actively preparing, actively waiting, because Jesus' story isn't over. We live in the time between him ushering in the kingdom of God and his birth in Bethlehem and the arrival of its fullness when he returns. So as we prepare to celebrate the glorious gift of Jesus coming to us on that first Christmas, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, we also remember that we are called 
to actively wait and prepare for the coming of Jesus again. We patiently, hopefully, wait for Christmas by sharing the good news, by sending cards that remind ourselves the reason for the season, by extending hospitality and fellowship, good cheer, good tidings, by listening to good music that shares the good message. This is active patience, actively waiting for the Lord. The blessing that you and I have during the season of Advent is that as we enter into the presence of Emmanuel, God with us in the manger, we are reminded that every day is a day in the presence of Emmanuel. And every day is a day to live as though he has already returned. So we wait patiently, perhaps, but actively, yes. Please, Jesus, don't be late. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.